Kia ora whanau. my name is Caitlin and I am the new Digital Media Health Promotions Coordinator at Women's Health Action and I'll be taking over these Digi updates from Cleo who was previously doing them. So for today and my first Digi update I thought it would be interesting if I talked to you guys a little bit about my thesis. So my thesis isn't published yet but it still is really interesting and very valuable to talk about. My thesis looked at women's experiences of breastfeeding. So in New Zealand, there are three things that new mothers have in common. First is that many of them try to breastfeed. Second is that many of them will return to paid employment. And third is that that return to paid employment will prompt them to access early childhood education services. In New Zealand, we try really hard to protect and promote breastfeeding and we have a range of ways to do this and a range of research to inform those. So there's some really fantastic research out there that looks at women's return to work, employment and how they manage breastfeeding with that. But as an ECE teacher, I realized that a lot of women in my center that I worked at as a baby teacher were struggling with breastfeeding. They either stopped breastfeeding before they started attending the center, or to be fair, our center didn't have the best structural support available to help these women in the first place, even if they did want to continue breastfeeding. This made me wonder, are breastfeeding women supported by their ECN centers? Is ECE centers a missing link in breastfeeding promotion and support? To answer my question, I began researching breastfeeding in the ECE environment, and I found that while lots of teachers really want to support women in their endeavour to breastfeed, what's lacking is the structural support that teachers need, the education, the resources, the policy. In the words of two New Zealand researchers who investigated this, breastfeeding within the context of childcare is not well established in New Zealand, and little progress appears to have been made towards the establishment of breastfeeding friendly early childhood services. Because in New Zealand there's no policy requirement for centres to support breastfeeding, it really comes down to the individual centre for them to decide how they want to support breastfeeding in this context. As I continued my research, I began to notice a glaring omission in the data. Was anyone going to ask mothers how they felt about this? I found that in Scotland there was a small scale study that was done that did ask mothers about their experiences of breastfeeding in early childhood centres. What was found was that there was a large disconnect between the, how the teachers thought they were supporting the mothers and how the mothers perceived that support. The mothers felt that the responsibility to protect breastfeeding in that environment was all on them and they were in charge of teacher education, raising awareness and making sure the centre had the adequate resources. The breastfeeding mothers in this study had the responsibility fall on them and they were already stressed, there was already a taxing return to paid employment and this was just one more barrier that made breastfeeding difficult for them. So what do Kiwi mums think? I set out to interview eight women living in Auckland on their experiences of breastfeeding while employed and accessing early childhood education. I found a range of experiences and I did look at both employment and early childhood services, but for the sake of keeping this video short, I'll focus on just the data from the early childhood section of my thesis. Teacher support. Teacher support was a really important factor for many participants and thankfully most of the participants noted that the teachers were really supportive. The teachers were trying to help them continue breastfeeding and so that was awesome to see. What was lacking was a little bit of education at times, particularly in the case of one woman. Uh, nobody in the whole ECE centre knew how to handle breast milk and she did get a few weird looks and a few strange comments. So that was mainly the only negative experience. Everyone else was really pleased with the support that the teachers provided. And they also said this was a real key reason for why they could continue breastfeeding. Structural support. What was more worrying was the apparent lack of structural support in almost all of these women's centres. Two of the primary ways centres didn't have structural support was by not having a written breastfeeding policy and having inadequate resources. There were lots of reasons why centres had inadequate resources, but the two I'll touch on in this video are lacking fridge space and not having designated breastfeeding areas. None of the women's centres had a written breastfeeding policy, despite the evidence suggesting policies are crucial to supporting breastfeeding in this environment. Designated breastfeeding spaces were sparse. All of the women were attending purpose-built centres, yet none of them had a private space for them to breastfeed in. For some women, this really wouldn't matter less, because they would have the confidence to sit in the public area and breastfeed, but for some women, that could be the difference between them having comfortable breastfeeding in that situation and not. The other factor was fridge space. Most centres only had fridge space for one day's supply of milk at a time, which meant that women had to manage bringing in milk every single day. And in more than one case, they actually only had enough space in the fridge for one breastfeeding mother at a time. So if there were more than one breastfeeding mother, there would have been space in the fridge. It was pure luck that these women had space in the fridge at their centres to store their breast milk. So what does this all mean? Teachers and mothers seem to be really keen to work together to protect and support breastfeeding in this environment. However, we really seem to be lacking the structural resources to do so in New Zealand. When we're lacking those structural resources, the responsibility falls on mothers who are already stressed with the return to work 
and ECE teachers, who as we know are undervalued and underpaid. We really need a nationwide shift to ensure that there is a nationwide policy in place for ECE centres to protect, promote and support breastfeeding, and we need to make sure that centres are aware of their obligation to protect breastfeeding in this environment. As one New Zealand researcher stated over 15 years ago, breastfeeding support is being intentionally ignored by the early childhood education community. I would argue that this evidence needs to be used to inform a national shift to facilitate education to ensure early childhood centres are well resourced to support breastfeeding and for there to be a national policy which can be implemented across all centres in New Zealand. In the information box below, I'll include some information that ECE centres can consider implementing to make their centres more breastfeeding friendly. Well there you have it, that's some of the conclusions that I reached in my thesis. That's just one section, but I think it is really important that we need to start considering how the early childhood education sector influences women's breastfeeding practices. That's all for today's Digi Update and I will see you all in the next one.